I welcome Nuclear for Australia and Mr William Shackle to the table. Um, uh, Mr Shackle is underage and is accompanied by his father. If you would both like to state your name and the capacity in which you're appearing, and can you please confirm for me that you have received information on parliamentary privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence? William Shackle, founder of Nuclear for Australia. I have received that information. And my name's Mark Shackle. I'm Will's father and guardian. And you have also received the information about parliamentary privilege? Yes. Fantastic. Mr Shackle, do you have an opening statement that you would like to share with us? I do, and I'd like to request it's heard out in full, if that's OK. Of course. Thank Please you. go ahead. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Senators, for providing me the opportunity to speak to you on behalf of young Australians across the country today. Australia is experiencing an energy and climate crisis. The cost of choosing not to do everything in our power to address these challenges is simply incomprehensible and it will be my generation that bears the brunt of the consequences. For far too long, young people like me have been sold slogans and facades of plans to address these challenges that we are told to blindly trust. If these untested plans fail, besides from dangerous and damaging fossil fuels, we have no backup, no redundancy and no plan B. The stakes have never been higher detrimental global climate change tipping points are on the horizon and without action we risk subjecting millions of Australians to devastating energy and financial poverty. Yet the one pragmatic and proven solution that can simultaneously address both issues is blatantly ignored in this country. It is locked away by an outdated ban, a relic of the 1990s, flippantly pass through Parliament, in doing so compromising the future of Australia's environment, energy security and economic prosperity. The consequences of the poor decisions you make now are the consequences my generation will be condemned to. Australia's clean energy transition is by far one of the nation's most ambitious undertakings and we need every credible solution, including nuclear energy, on the table. I want to emphasise why I specifically am here today, because my appearance shouldn't just be tokenistic. The reason I've decided to come down to Canberra today is because young people and Australians across the country who support nuclear energy have had their voices sacrificed in, a, sacrificed in our energy debate, and we need to be heard. Now, this includes many experts, some of which you have and will receive evidence from, including Dr Aidy Patterson, Professor Tony Irwin, Professor Peter Tyree, Professor Stephen Wilson, Robert Pritchard, Helen Cook, James Flay, Robert Parker, Dr Robert Barr, Dr Robert da David Carlin, sorry, Dr Dave Collins, Dr James Taylor, Warren Mundine and Tim Stone CBE and organisations such as Replanet Australia. The truth is, whether you like it or not, Australians overwhelmingly support nuclear energy. It's why in the space of a few months my campaign has had such a huge reception. My petition to legalise nuclear energy now has over 5,000 signatures and counting. My findings are cooperated by polling conducted by Compass Polling Research sorry, last week, which found that an overwhelming majority of Australians, 70 per cent, want nuclear energy to be explored as an option for meeting our energy and security and emissions targets. So why do Australians support the legalisation of nuclear energy? I think it's pretty simple. Firstly, nuclear energy is incredibly environmentally friendly. It's zero carbon. Secondly, nuclear is reliable. It provides reliable baseload power and, unlike solar and wind, is not dependent on the weather. Thirdly, nuclear energy is safe. Indeed, it's the second safest form of energy generation, certainly far safer than fossil fuels that currently underpin our energy generation mix, and modern reactor designs will only enhance this. Now, I'm open for questions, but please remember I'm a 16-year-old, so I'll do my very best to provide a response well. in my limited capacity. Well, you've done exceptionally well. And we do appreciate you coming along, not in a tokenistic sense at all, <laughs> but in the sense that it is very good to hear from young people who are passionate about issues. Uh, this committee's job is to debate and explore this issue as opposed to um, mm. be looking at any kind of confronting experience. So, um, And I really appreciate that, Chair. So thank you. Thank you. Senator Hughes, would thank you like you, to start? Chair. Thank you, Mr Shackle. Yes. Uh, 
One of the things that we hear um, very often, particularly when it comes to younger voters, yeah. which you're not quite in, but almost yeah. there, uh, is their concerns over climate change, yeah. environmental damage, uh, and these sorts of issues that are, that are vote driving for them. Uh, why do you think it is that there's, an, there's a block on lifting this moratorium, lifting this prohibition, uh, when you've, you've yeah. articulated, and we've already heard today, that nuclear is uh, you know, the lowest form of uh, reliable bad slow power when it comes to emissions, uh, that it won't require new transmission lines that are going to create environmental damage mm. that we just heard like previously. Yeah. Um, why do you think it is those that do have the say are frightened of lifting this moratorium when mm. young voters see zero emissions and environmental protection as paramount issues? Look, it's, it's really beyond me, and I'm quite astounded that in this day and age that we can still have a nuclear prohibition like this. I think that historically, and obviously I've only been alive for 16 years, so I can't say much, but um, the narrative around nuclear has, you've seen through media, through pop culture, the propagation of misinformation. And I think um, in, in our hearing today, you've really seen... Um, people with expert opinions given a platform, and I think that's really important, and I think it's really important for Australians to hear from people with expert opinions, for, because for many, and this actually also includes young Australians, their only exposure to the thought of nuclear energy, because of course it's banned, it's irrelevant, mm. is through media, mm. is through pop culture, is through The Simpsons, like was mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, and obviously that's not, that's not the depiction of nuclear we want, mm. um, and it's not a realistic representation of nuclear energy. So I think we had a real turning point here in Australia where we, and I would really encourage that we um, have an open mind to nuclear energy, mm. that we have a fact-based debate, and we give a platform to experts like those behind me um, who really know their stuff. Like, let's not pretend they've had um, so many years' experience in these spaces. We should really be giving them a platform to have their voices heard on this issue. Mm -hmm. Do you think that a lot of young Australians would see those sort of, these sort of issues as vote-changing for them going into the future? Um, well, clearly climate change and energy is vote-changing for many young Australians. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think for young Australians, they just, they just want solutions. Um, look, if not, we don't... Not ideology. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what I'd say is if we do not reach our emissions targets, I think young people are not going to be very happy. Let, mm. let me say that. And at this stage, what the experts are saying is that there is a, there is a risk that we will not be reaching, say, 80% um, renewable energy by 2030. And if that eventuates, I'm sure, I can assure you, there will be pushback mm. from young Australians. They will, like, let's make this clear. Fossil fuels and gas will be used far into the future, mm. beyond 2030. Young people are not going to be happy with that. They will retaliate. Um, so if you want to get young people on side, mm. embrace nuclear energy. It's clean, it's reliable, and it's a proven technology. Mm. It, there isn't, when people talk about risk in association with nuclear energy, like, I, I, I'm some, sometimes a bit confused about it, because what is the risk? Like, nuclear, there's nuclear reactors in 32 countries around the world. Mm. Something like over 14,000 years of successful combined operation. There's 50, around 50 countries about to open up nuclear reactors. There is no risk. Mm. We, know what, we know what it looks like. Mm. It's just time that we embrace it and legalise it. Mm. And absolutely have the discussion yes. so we know what the real cost are, exactly. uh, is and make it comparable over the right period of time versus what we're seeing in current cost yep. analysis. All right. Chair, I'll hand back to you. Thank you. Um, you make some really good points, uh, Mr Shackle. Mm. One of the things that's been a debate yeah. for decades in Australia, and there's been a couple of cracks at, um, at unpacking it, uh, one in my home state of South Australia mm. um, some years ago, and that's the whole social licence. Like you say, you, you, you're not sure why people are fearful, um, yet older generations have seen uh, issues w that would cause them concern. How do you think? Um, how do you think that's going? You say that you you have heard uh, that, that you believe seventy percent of people support nuclear energy, and there's a variety of uh, polls out there that go anything from only thirty percent up to where you're you know you're seventy percent. What do you think? Um, 
what, what do you think that is is changing people's minds, and what do you think that difference between 30 and 70 kind of yeah. represents? Um, well, first of all, I can't really comment on the disparity in the polling results. I can only refer you to the report that was made last week, which, you know, that's the most relevant information we currently have by um, Compass Research, which is a credible organisation. And that found that 70 per cent of Australians, like I said in my initial statement, were willing to at least consider nuclear energy and want nuclear energy in order to address our energy insecurity um, and emissions targets. It also found a significant decline in people who identify as anti-nuclear to 18 per cent, proving that there is a considerable social licence for nuclear energy. But also to, to note, there's a lot of undecided people um, in Australia. So what I'd say, I think it's very difficult to be able to quantify the support, mm. but I think by what we're seeing now, um, if we were in this position, if nuclear was legal, like it is in every other G20 member state, um, I, I don't think we would look at these results and say, oh look, <laughs> Australians are overwhelmingly in opposition to nuclear energy, therefore there's impetus to prohibit it. I don't think if we were in this position where there's an energy and climate crisis, where um, we're trying to get to net zero, we would reasonably rule it out. I, I don't think that's realistic. And that's why I make the claim that the prohibition's out of, seriously out of touch. I hope I answered your question. You did. Thank you very okay. much. I think it's a difficult thing because yeah. polling, polling can tell us all sorts of things. Yes. And it's always difficult to find where, that, um, where the reality sort of bites. Um, Thank you. Senator Canavan. Uh, thank you, Chair, and I'd uh, just like to compliment you, Mr Shackle. Uh, it's a, a very, very good performance, uh, not just for a 16-year-old, for anyone, and, and also congratulate you, Mark. You must be a very proud dad. Uh, can I just ask, how did you get into this? Like, yeah. How did you decide to start this organisation and come all this mm. way as a 16-year-old that most yeah. other people would be, <laughs> if not focusing on their studies, focusing on other things? So how did you yeah. get to focus on this? Well, thank you for that question. Um, well, I started Nuclear for Australia in January, um, and it was because I, for a long time, I'd been interested in nuclear energy. Clearly in school, we're not taught that, that much about it. Um, so I think it's unique that someone like me has some experience and knowledge in the space. Um, so my reasoning for supporting nuclear is, look, I, I, I really just thought it was pretty silly that we had a prohibition in this day and age um, when we've got an energy and climate crisis and we should realistically have every single solution um, on the table. So I think also what this process has shown me and you know, how I've come down to Canberra is I've had a lot of support through my campaign. Like I said, I've got 5,000 signatures on my petition. I've got young people across the country who are supporting me, um, such as Timothy, he's back there, he's joined me today. Um, I've actually had people also contact me today. And this also includes people you know you might not expect to support nuclear energy, like people like my friends who support um, and go to Extinction Rebellion protests. They support nuclear energy. Unfortunately, they're not allowed to represent, to voice their views on nuclear energy. But I think it, I've been, I've been very, um, I've had a lot of gratitude for the support my campaign's received, and I think it goes to show that Australians want nuclear energy to be legalised, and that's particularly, you know, given I'm a 16-year-old, it's a grassroots campaign, mm -hmm. certainly don't have any funding. Um, so I think I've done... It, it's a real testament to the support, grassroots support in Australia. Yeah, I think you're right. You could call nuclear the great unifier if uh, you mm. get me marching with Extinction Rebellion. Uh, that's mm. quite an achievement. Um, <laughs> um, um, we'll look out for those pictures. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. add those to the list yeah. in a koala suit. Um, uh, can, can, uh, can I ask you about well, why do you think young people are attracted to this? It seems to me that one of the things that's happening is there's quite a lot of exciting developments, technological developments in the nuclear mm. space, in SMRs, in fusion was mentioned earlier. Yeah. Do you think that's one of the reasons that young people are getting interested in this space, that, that technological aspect of it, it's got something exciting and new yeah. things are happening, etc.? Um, well, what I'd say is young people are interested in science. Yeah. I think that's really important. You see that with STEM. And Young people are very, very receptive to science these days. They're not just going to buy what they see in the media, and also they haven't been exposed to you know, that misinformation I mentioned earlier um, in the media. So I, I think that's 
really important. Do you mind if you just repeat your question? Yeah, I just want to ask you, the <laughs> science, do you think one after. aspect of why young people are interested yeah, in this sorry. is because of these scientific developments? Yeah. Uh, uh, like fusion and SMRs, yeah. is that something you discuss with people at school or uh, mm. in the young people you're talking to? Yes. So, no, I, I agree with you, Senator. Um, I think that's why young people are more receptive to it. And I'd probably say the same is true of Australians. It's a more palatable solution. Look, nuclear energy is safe. We, we can't deny that. But when it's bundled up as an SMR, which consolidates the benefits of nuclear, which enhances it, or, or other like Gen 4 technologies or mm. fusion or thorium, whatever, um, I think young people do, are optimistic about that possibility. Just, just one final question then, yep. uh, uh, Chair. Uh, uh, do you, is, do, are some of your, 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 contempt, your colleagues, mm. school colleagues, are they inter interested in a career in, in nuclear science? And if so, are they excited about the nuclear submarines? And, and is that something that's potentially driving interest as well? I'm going to say no. Um, it's because they have no options to really do it. Right. If they had to pursue that field, um, look, AUKUS has come out, but what opportunities can they find in Australia? I think that's... Uh, so, no. So you My think answer young, is if, no. If young people are excited, they kind of have to think about going overseas at the moment. Yes, then, possibly. they would. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure... I look at my friendship group, I know this is anecdotal evidence, but um, I'm sure that if there were opportunities, there would be people who would genuinely, genuinely sorry, pursue that avenue. Um, because you just look around Australia, there's a huge interest in STEM, and STEM relates to nuclear energy in many ways. Those skills you acquire through the STEM subjects um, can be transferred into nuclear engineering and all those different disciplines. So, I'd say if, if the opportunity presented itself, if nuclear energy was legalised, the prohibition was lifted, I'm sure there'd be many young Australians who would put their hand up be, um, so they would be skilled and be employable in that area. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks again, Mr Shackle. Thank you very yes. much, Mr Shackle. Um, we appreciate you coming along today and sharing your views with us. Um, you've done exceptionally well. Mm for your first run out at a yes. Senate committee. Um, I've no doubt we'll see you again. Thank um, you, Chair. But thank, thank you, you so much and safe travels home. I thank really you. appreciate it.